सो नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट स्पेक्ट्रल हेमिसफेरिकल एम एस पावर ई लेमडा फॉर ए डिफ्यूज एमिटर द टर्म एम एस पावर और हेमिसफेरिकल एम एस पावर इम्प्लाइज एमिशन इन ऑल डायरेक्शन द एडजेक्टिव हेमिसफेरिकल इज देयर फोर रिटेंटेंट एंड इज ऑफन ड्रॉप्ड बिकॉज वी आर कॉलिंग talking about the hemispherical emissive power hemispherical itself means in all directions so we can uh, drop this adjective actually and we can call it only as the emissive power so for example if i have to speak of spectral hemispherical emissive power e lambda so i can remove this hemispherical also that is why i have put it in uh, brackets so i can call it as only spectral emissive power so when i say spectral it means its dependence is on lambda so that is why e lambda or i can also take the total mc power e or total hemispherical mc power e so once again hemispherical is kept in brackets so that means it is redundant to use it here so whether i call it as the total mc power or only the mc power it is one and the same thing now what is a diffuse emitter now a diffuse emitter is a surface for which the intensity of the emitted radiation is independent of direction theta and phi so diffuse emitter will emit with equal intensity in all the directions so that is why we can say that i lambda e which has the dependence lambda theta and phi can now be taken only as i lambda e with dependence only on lambda so we have omitted the other two directions theta and phi and that is how we call a diffuse emitter as a surface for which the intensity of the emitted radiation is independent of direction now when we remove this and uh, i remember uh, i hope that you remember the previous equation for the uh, spectral emissive power e lambda or spectral uh, radiant flux so the equation was given by i lambda e lambda theta phi means this is the dependence and multiplied by cos theta sin theta d theta d phi this was the equation 12.8 from which we can calculate the spectral emissive power so what we can say here is now because we are considering a diffuse surface so this particular quantity which is shown here this particular quantity which is shown here is now independent of theta and phi direction once it is independent of theta and phi then it is dependent on only on lambda so you can see there is no d lambda here appearing in this particular equation 12.18 12.8 so we can take this out of the integration sign so here once again we have written the same equation you can see it it is the same equation 12.8 and here in the next line we have taken i lambda as a function of lambda out of the integration sign and remaining is Uh, here we have the phi varying between 0 to 2 pi and theta varying between 0 to pi by 2 remaining is same cos theta sin theta d theta d phi now if i integrate with respect to phi so this value will be equal to 2 pi so 2 pi is taken out of the uh, here the remaining is i lambda e with the integration form uh, 0 to pi by 2 for cos theta sin theta and d theta so in the next line what we have written is this equation is now transformed in terms of sin 2 theta divided by 2 into d theta and this 2 and 2 can be cancelled out so e lambda will be equal to pi times i lambda e with the integration of sin 2 theta d theta with theta varying from 0 to pi by 2 and then once we do its integration you know that uh, the integration of sin 2 theta is minus cos 2 theta divided by 2 and the limits are from 0 to pi by 2 outside you can see it is uh, pi times i lambda e so here i can say that it is cos 0 because now what i have considered i have absorbed this uh, minus sign in terms of the limits actually so first of all i am taking cos 0 minus cos pi Um, how we get the pi you can understand it from here it is cos 2 theta into 2 pi so that will give you the cos pi and the value of uh, cos 0 is 1 here 
and uh, cos pi is minus 1. So ultimately you get the expression this comes out to be 2. So this 2 and this 2 will cancel out and you are left with pi times i lambda e with a dependence upon lambda and t. Here I would like to tell you that intensity of the radiation is also dependent upon the temperature. Till now I have told you that it is dependent upon lambda, theta and phi. Okay, but here we are talking about a diffuse emitter. So uh, whether it is a diffuse emitter or whether it is a, uh, a real surface, the intensity of radiation will also depend upon the temperature. So E lambda, which is the spectral hemispherical emissive power will be equal to pi times I lambda E. So now what we can do is from this the equation, we can calculate the hemispherical emissive power for a black surface also. Now for a black surface, uh, we can always say that E B lambda is equal to pi times I B lambda E. E stands only for the emission. So for any temperature T and lambda. So I can say E B lambda as a function of T and lambda is equal to pi times I B lambda E. Similarly, I can also say that E B means total emissive power or only emissive power of a black body is equal to pi times I B. Now, what is this I B? I B is the intensity of radiation, which is independent of the direction as well as the um, spectral uh, thing. So I can say I B is equal to, if I have to calculate this value of I B, it will be given by I B lambda E into D lambda with uh, lambda varying from 0 to infinity because now I am considering the total range of the wavelength. So that is how I have got this equation E B is equal to pi times uh, I B. And if it is a general diffuse surface, I can say E will be given by pi times I E, where I E is the total intensity of the emitted radiation units of E and I E are watt per meter square and watt per meter square steradian. And unit of pi here is steradian being the solid angle. So here we in this uh, lecture we have discussed about the hemispherical emissive power, spectral hemispherical emissive power of a diffuse surface as well as for a black surface.